Welcome everybody to Carolina Fishing TV this morning. Your host, Captain Mike Taylor. We've got my good friend and a sponsor, Chris Allman. How you doing, bro? Crystal Coast Graphics. He helps myself and Jeff out with the tournament trail. We bowl together. Do good, a little bit of everything. Good friend. We fish a lot together. We're going to go out this morning. We're going to try to catch some big Spanish, four or five pounders, maybe a king mixed in with them. Right now, we're back in this bay. We're going to catch some uh, live menhaden. We've already threw and caught some uh, little finger mullets for your shad. We got some right in front of us here. I'm gonna throw on them. Doesn't take a big net, they're, they're small shad. That's all we'll need for the whole day. And some. If anybody's been on the water this year, they know that. <laughs> One thing about it, menhaden is not hard to catch. We'll probably run by about 15 schools going out there. It's been a phenomenal year for menhaden this year. Using some mailing wire 31 pound test it's a pretty simple rig I've already cut my my wire I'm gonna go ahead and make a bend in it I just use my rod make the bend put your hook on you, you want to do three haywire twist and then I, I finish it off with about three barrel twists the haywire twist you put them at a 45 hold them tight Twist with both your fingers, both your hands, three times. All right, after you do that, finish it off with about three or four barrel twists. And that's just straight over the top, wrapping it. The calmer the day, the calmer the water, the more leader shy the Spanish are. Today we have real light winds, about five miles per hour. So I'm gonna actually do something a little different today. I have some 20 pound fluorocarbon. I'm gonna put some 10 foot fluorocarbon leaders on my fire line. Try to help with that leader shyness. Little tsunami barrel swivel. They're 35 pound tests. And this is light leaders, you know. For King Micro, I would suggest 43 pound test. But today we're gonna to be fishing mainly for the big Spanish. You can get by with 30 pound test. The 31 wire but if I was fishing for kings I'd go 43 later on in the fall 60 you get the bigger kings they can actually bite through 31 so I'll upgrade the 60 pound test that's about 10 feet tie this on the line here with a uni knot then I'm gonna do a double uni to my fire line Got him on right there. I just threw that bait out where he just broke and he hit it instantly. Just on fire here this morning. We've been here probably, well, about four or five minutes now and we've already had four or five hits. You gotta get them from the front. You gotta be quick. You can't, you can't net him from behind. You gotta net him face first. All right, here he is, get ready. You can see the spots on these big ones, they're pretty pronounced. But the easiest way to tell a Spanish is that black dorsal fin. There they go. Hey, you throw your bait right in there. Look at that king. You see him? He just skied on that bait. Get ready on that rod right there, Chris. I'm gonna throw this bait in there where he's breaking on. There he is. Got him on. Good job. I threw about seven or eight mullets out right then, finger mullets, and it was instantly we had Spanish and King Sky. But they're behind the boat still. Still breaking behind the boat? Yep, about 20 yards back. This one's been pitched. No bait on this one. Here you go. Got him on. Screaming. Got a double. All 
All right, fight this fish here. You're gonna have to go down, hold down. Down, down, down. Big Spanish. He is nice. Another nice Spanish. That's about a four and a half pound Spanish right there. Good job. Right now we're running three rods. This one here is, you know you probably can't see it, but it's about 40 yards back. It's our longest rod. Then we're running the other one out of the rocket launcher. It's about 25 yards back. And then this rod here, you can just about see that bait. I just pulled it out of the water for you. A lot of people ask me, how you go out there and out that boat with no outriggers and not get tangled up all the time? Well, all you do is spread your rods. Look at that king going after that bait. I'm gonna throw this bait right on him. We got him jumping over here beside the boat now, right in front of the boat. There he is. Got him on that quick. <laughs> now that was fast. Watch that rod in the back. They're chasing him. Shaking his head a lot. Must be a Spanish. Oh yeah, Spanish mark. Throw him in the boat. Got him on. It is on fire here. Look at him busting all around the boat everywhere. I'm gonna put this on the floor. I'm gonna hook up another one. Gonna throw a couple of finger molds out. Then you just hook one on and wait for them to bust. When they bust, throw that finger mold right in there where they're busting. Hooking them right through the nose there. Got him in the boat. Another nice big Spanish. Can't even get two lines out of here. So second line, just as soon as it hit the water, we had him on. Here's the third rod. Can't get it out. <laughs> They're just on fire here this morning. I love the southeast wind. If it's light, it'll make that water so blue. Look at it. I mean, it's just crystal clear in here right now. Nice big three and a half, four pound Spanish. I'm gonna go ahead and throw him in the boat. It's now 8.15 right now. We've been here probably about, I don't know, 20 minutes with the baits in the water. We have, you know, five big Spanish already and two kings. It's just an awesome bite here this morning. There he goes. Got him on. Don't even know he's hooked right now. There he is. Feels like I have him hooked right in the top of the head. Bulldogging down. <laughs> you boys having fun yet? <laughs> Pretty nice fish here. Still believe he's piled a hooker on top of the head. Not getting no leverage on him. Putting the motor in and out of gear. Keeping our lines tight on the rod. Hooked right in the side of the pectoral fan. Like. Nice big Spanish. Man, that's nice. Got him on. Jeff's got one on over there. Just non stop. Definitely don't want to stick your finger near them teeth there. <laughs> like razor blades. That is a big Spanish. Let me knit him. He's pushing citation size, Chris. <laughs> citation for a Spanish is six pounds. He is right there. Something cut his pen off when he was younger. <laughs> it's probably gonna be about two ounces short. <laughs> nice one. About a 10 pound king, Jeff says. Two happy boys right there now. Actually, a keeper king mackerel. Pretty decent. If 
try that one more time. Get in here. <laughs> you see the rock formation. A lot of bait marking fish right here. A lot of bait in the water. I have my other one here on GPS mode and you can see my tracks. I'm standing right here in this one little spot. And all these numbers are ledges. We're not just trolling down the beach for these big Spanish canyons. We're targeting them on a, you know, a rock ledge. We've got one right here chasing. You start seeing that rod start going crazy and that bait going crazy, don't mess with it. Let him take it. When that rod hits, you see that? We've been trolling here for probably about, what? Three or four minutes without a hit. It's getting kind of slow. And I'll show you, this is what you do when the fish are here. It's not a, they're coming up underneath our baits. They're just not feeding. What you gotta do is you gotta chum them up with live bait. I'll throw four or five pogies out, get them feeding, then they'll hit our lines. Disperse them out. You don't want to throw them all out right beside the boat, though. Get underneath your boat and swim with your boat. Doesn't do any good. I throw them all around. You throw them all out together, they'll all stay right together. You want to throw them two here, two here, on this side, that side. Jeff just put a nice, nice Spanish there. And then, I mean, it was just unbelievable. And there wasn't a scratch in my gel coat or anything. It looked like a just come out the factory, popped it out of the mold. Another Spanish. You go ahead, I'm gonna reel it out of your way. Another one breaking back there, same break. Now that fish there on a Clark spoon would be an extremely nice Spanish. But out here live baiting, He's one of the smallest with catch. He's about two and a half pounds. Be a good fish on a clerk's pan. I think we got like seven Spanish in that one king or something. We're gonna head on back to the dock. It's about nine o'clock. We've been out for, I don't know, probably about a, maybe two hours at the most. Not even that, really. Uh, these fish are shut down. We could stay here and, and catch one probably about every 15 minutes. Captain Jeff there, he's there with John Hislop and the boys. We're going to both head back to the dock and, well, got him on right now. We're going to go back to the dock after we get this fish and we'll show you how to clean them up. That's got to be a king the way he's running. He's screaming. I got to turn around to the left and go back at him. He's still going. Got a nice king coming at you. He probably took off about 130 yards of line. We've been using these pin, this is a 650 SSM. We just call them the pin black and gold. They're extremely durable out here. Decent drags. Uh, pretty much stainless and brass inside. This rod here has 20 pound test fire line crystal on it. Uh, the other two rods have a just a Shimano conventional. It has 20 pound and then my other one has 14 pound braid Berkeley fire line crystal. Definitely want to keep your drag, you know, don't don't lock up on these fish. You, you know, we're not using but like I said 2x strong little tiny number six gold hooks. These are the same leaders I've tied. We've caught probably, we've had at least 25 strikes this morning. Probably have 10 fish in the box. And it's the same leaders. I haven't changed one, hadn't had one cut off. Same stuff. Nice king marker right there now. That's a nice ending fish right there, folks. That's about a 20 pounder. Probably a little bit more than 20, actually. Feels pretty heavy. Pretty heavy, isn't it? Oh yeah. Come on out here. Captain Jeff right there, Captain Mike Taylor. Come on out and get you a 20 plus pound King Mark on all the big Spanish you want. It's been a good day for just about an hour and 45 minutes. All right, everybody, we're back here to the dock. We've don't got- worry, Don't worry where you at now, yeah. I know you wore out. <laughs> 
they've had a good time today. We're back here at the dock. We had uh, we're fishing about a mile off the beach. We've got that summertime bite on those big Spanish and kings mixed in them. Unexpectedly popped the 20 pound king there. Mike did at the very end. 20 pound king. We weighed that Spanish. He, he did go over six pounds, so we got a citation Spanish. There's a citation Spanish right there. He's got his tail clipped. He's still a little over six pounds there. That's it. This usually lasts for us anywhere from about late May all the way through early October. Yep. As we get later in the season, there's less and less of the big Spanish and more of the big kings moving in. So. That's it. The big kings will be in here around. Any of them northeast blows in September, they start out into August to get that hard northeaster, pushes all them mullet bait out there on the beach. The big king will show up and we'll be out there fishing for them. We're gonna show you. Um, we're gonna go ahead and rip a few of these fish up. Mike's got that big king there, that 20 pound king I'm jealous of. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna clean one of these Spanish, about a four pound Spanish. We don't have to worry about their backbone too badly. If you have a hard time with that backbone, you can take and outline that fish real quick. You don't have to, but it'll raise that meat off that edge of that edge of that body, and then just slide it, find the edge of that spinal column, and just slide it right down. You don't have to work your way around that backbone. You're done. That's it. Carve out some row there if you like rowing your eggs in the morning. We just take out that belly bone there, and then whatever size you want the fillets depending on how you're going to cook them what you're going to do to them so let them show you those kings. The traditional way on a king would would just uh, slit down take the bellies off cut these fins off and then stake him take your shredded edge knife and stake him. I do it a little different. Uh, it eliminates that big backbone inside your steak. I just fillet it right off it's not long enough to go all the way through the other side. I have to lift him up. Big old fat, healthy fish here. All right. And once you get that fillet off there, that's a nice fillet. <laughs> then clean him up a little bit for you. Cut that little bit of belly bone out. What I'd do with this here first, I'd start it by right here. I'd just leave that as a chunk for the grill. But instead of having that big backbone in your steak, I'll cut down through to the skin, leave it attached, and then on the next slice, just slice all the way through it. And that's a boneless steak. Yeah. That's pretty. Just on the first one, cut through the skin. Second one, cut all the way through the skin. And that's what we call butterflying them. Cut down to the skin, all the way through, through it. And that gives you just about a boneless steak. You'll have just a couple bones right here on each side. All the rest of it's bone. Pretty easy, it's real simple. And if you, if you like the bone in it, you can just gut him, cut all the way through with straight edge real quick and stake him out that way.